Hey, sneaking us back tonight. Tonight we're looking at eLive or eLive, a Debian based distro with enlightenment. And very nice it is too, as you can see from the screen. Very nice. Now, if you click the screen once with the right click, you'll get the application bars will come up like that, all there for you. Or you can just go down the bottom there and just click once. Down the bottom we have a terminal, an IRC chat client, Thuna, web. Gimpy, M player and audacious. So that's quite okay. And it all looks so nice and runs really, really nice too actually. So that's quite cool. Under accessories have farm management demos, alarm countdown, Bluetooth stuff, translator, calculator, privacy assistant, another terminal and expad sticky notes. I like that bit actually, that's quite good. Sorry about me cold, but hey. EMSN links to Skype transmission for your BitTorrent client and your browser. Under sound and audacious audio CD, eLive Essence, sound recorder, stream tuner, and volume control. Hmm. Essence, let's have a look at that first, shall we? Never heard that before, so that's a good look. So if we give it a bit of a click and wait a little while. Ah. Ooh, Denon. That brings back memories of Denon. What a good hi fi brand that was. Now here we have some tracks already loaded, and they play away. You haven't got sound, obviously, legal reasons, but I have. Does work very nice too. Now this is all really nice, based on the old uh, ordinary audio player, shall I say? Excuse me there. You can change all your graphics settings. Look lovely. Give it a bit of bass and treble boosts, etc., etc. You've got a preamp there as well. We can bump it up a bit and deafen ourselves. I like that bit, I like being deaf, not a lot really, but hey, just, but it's all there for you to use, nice, 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 we'll come out of there, and we'll go to the next one, so what I'm going to do, or right click one more time, sorry, left click one more time, should I say, I'll go back to the sound menu, because I got put off track there, didn't I, because it was different, and I wanted to have a look, but it's all the same now, GIMP's there, DTKM, Epson scanner and Xzane image scanning, as you will know, video Avid Emux is there. I don't know what version this is, we'll have a look in a second. DVD encoder, M player, webcam viewer, and another DVD player. We we'll click on Avid Emux. Nice simple editing program, it does what it says on the tin. I've never had a go wrong, give it a go if you want to do some. It's really easy to you. And you can also output it in lots and lots of different formats, which is the good thing about it. So that's good. Okay, we'll go back to the menu again. No, but where was we? I forgot. Office, Abbey Word, Generic, as standard, as did the lighter ones. I'm not going to open them. You just get a couple of games. But hey, you can always add your own, can't you? Well, you could if it was easy enough, but it's not as easy as it seems. There's no synaptic here. So you have to put that on yourself. Which, of course, I have done, because I'm lazy. I don't want to do too much in the CLI all the time. And if you're going to download it and you're not used to Linux, you don't want to either, do you? So you really need that package manager for you to do it all. Anyway, we're down the bottom here. That's got wine as well, Brazero burning program. So that's all hunky dory. So let's go to the web. We'll open the fox up, bloody quick, as you can see. Right, we'll click on eLive or Elv or whatever you want to call it. We'll go to the official website. Here we are. They've got their own little demo video. If you want to have a look at it there, I think mine's better anyway, because I'm showing you what to do. It tells you it's Debian based, Enlightenment, it's 16 and 17. Mm, intuitive, yes, it's quite good, easy to use, yeah, simple. Whether it'll run on that sort of CPU requirement, we don't know. I will give that a go though, because I've got a couple of old lappies here, so I might give it a little go to see if it actually plays anything. But we'll go from there, shall we? Now, here's the little thing we have here. If you want a stable version, this is the problem we have. I'll scroll down the page and you'll see what I mean. Now, to get a stable version, he wants some pennies. A minimum of ten of any currently. I don't know if that's ten pence or ten pounds or dollars or what. So it's not totally free, but if he's using his own time, I mean, I know I do have some hang-ups about other people who want to uh, charge Linux. This actually looks really nice, unlike some of the others I won't mention right at this moment. So what I did, I downloaded a development version, which is the unstable, I think, but don't quote me on that one, but I think it is. And it runs really nice. Not too bad at all. So we go to the old YouTube. I'll tap it into Google, make sure it all works. Nice and quick again. Look, lazy, lazy, easy, easy peasy. Super. Go straight to that page. Great. Like it, like it, like it. It's super. 
I think my voice is going. Never mind. Okay, parkour free running in Bournemouth. Well, that's not too far from me. So we'll see if the tube plays. And of course it does. Now, this isn't my frame rate capture. This is the video. It's a bit manky, shall we say. But hey, it works. It's just showing you some guys doing really stupid stuff. We'll get rid of that. I don't want to do that anymore. Puts me off my tea. Okay, what should we do next? Go back down applications. I'm going to concentrate on the internet apps, really. EMSM. Now, I waited several times, and I've clicked several times. I've edited this bit, by the way. And it didn't want to play ball. So, that's one little bit. But then, it is not a stable version. It's a development version, isn't it? So, you know, not too good. Skype, on the other hand, is 2.0, which is the one that actually works. I've got 2.1 on my main machine at home, and it don't want to play ball at the moment. So, anyway, I'll type my username in. That's me. And then I'll type my password in. And we'll sign in. Now, sign in takes a bit of a while, I found. So we could wait here, or we could go and do something else. So, what do you reckon? I'm going to use one of the various 12 desktops to go and do something else. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to the web. What should we look at this time? Mm, yes. Osgui. Now, if you're a YouTube viewer, you might have heard of Osgui.com. He's just set up a site from Australia. A bad accent, I'm really, really sorry. We'll go to his site. Now, some of us YouTubers, open source ones, have gone there and we've put some of our videos on and we've joined. It's just starting up. Give it a bit of a chance. We're getting there, as we say. And the time zone of everybody is a bit of a pain up the back side, to say the least. But we're getting there. And there's plenty of stuff you can ask questions, people will reply your answers if you want, etc, etc. Give it a look at. Give it a go. You might want to join. Hey, and there's plenty of vids on there as well that some of you may never have seen on YouTube because you haven't actually typed it in. Now, after all that time, Skype has come up. Works. I use this as my test account, so there's only one thing on there. I've not used it for a while for a simple reason. I'm having problems with the 2.1 at the moment on Ubuntu, so that's a bit of a bummer. Anyway, that's enough of that. Right, where should we go? Enlightenment. You, you know you can add all different themes in Enlightenment. I've had done videos on that before. If you want to add programs, obviously you can use a terminal. T terminal, should we say, or a CLI. Well, basically all you do is type sudo. That's your main thing you want, and say if you want to get something from sudo apt get, say, pigeon or whatever, or whatever program you wanted, really, and do it from the CLI. But obviously if you're not used to it, you're a bit frightened of it, maybe not a good idea. So that's where Synaptic comes in, really, end of the day. So as you can see, I've got Synaptic here. I'm going to open it, and we're going to find something. So we click on Search. And here we go. I'm going to put Pigeon in. Because as the MSN don't work, we want something else, don't we? So there we go. If we scroll down a little bit, and we'll find Pigeon. There we go. Blah, 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 blah. You know it makes sense. Click on it. Mark for installation. There's all the extra libs that got to be installed. Click OK. And all you do is click on Apply. Now, if you've used deb-based packages before, or deb-based distros, this is all normal to you. But if you're just watching this video for the first time and going, Oh my God, what's going on? You know what I'm saying. Now, my net capture is not very well. Net capture. My net download is not very good at the moment, so I've edited that bit. So, it goes a bit quicker for you. Plus, I want to keep it under 10 minutes for the video. Otherwise, I'm not allowed to post it, of course. We've downloaded all the packages, we're installing the software, this takes a little while. There we go, almost done. One, two, three, four, five, and we're done. You just click on close. The little box goes round and round and round and round, and there we go. Superb. Cancel it. We go back down to applications, down to internet, and there we see Pigeon. And up pops Pigeon. All you do is basically click add, put whatever one you want in, like MSN, Yahoo, AOL, blah 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 blah. It'll work for you, no problem. Lovely. Skype still there, look. Lovely. Super duper. No, I rather like this. It runs really, really quick and nice. Give it a go. But you have to have unstable. Sneaky Linux out. See you later.